What I'd like you to see first here is we've got a keyboard here that is now all color coded and we, all we did is we followed the directions on our installation part two and there's no stickers on that. There's no stickers on, on C sharp and then D is blue, uh, D sharp is dark red. The stickers are washable, they're removable. There's more than enough there for you so you can put them on. Now installing the actual keyboard, all you need is really a USB cable the keyboard should be recognized automatically. There may be drivers that come with it, but they're not necessary. It's powered by the USB, put in your color-coded stickers. The installation is normal. It's, a, it's an auto run in Windows. You will need administrative rights. As for Mac, it'll show you two folders, one with the uh, Piano Wizard Academy and one with applications. You simply drag it over into that. And both types of installation are on the CD. So you've got a setup opportunity here and I've already set this up and selected myself. And I'm gonna go into Premiere mode. You have the help files over here on the left. Each section has its own help files. But keyboard setup is very important. And you see the first thing is a sound output device and that should be set automatically for you. And then the MIDI input device, you might have multiple keyboards that you're using. And there's a keyboard size test down here. And so I click on that when I first install it and it's asked me to press the first key to the left is, is what we mean by that. And then the, the last key to the right, and it tells me down here, it's a four octave keyboard. And then over here on the on screen keyboard size, you probably want to select the same size. Then there's the song selection. Your Dreams is the very first song. And you would select that, and then you might go to the tracks menu. The tracks menu shows you track one, is set to play. All the other tracks are set to accompaniment. But if I wanted to play both hands, I could select right as the track one and left as track two. So now you see this is highlighted down here. So I've got left and right hand. I have over here the ability to choose different sounds. Once you've set up your song, you're really ready to play. But I would go and check visual. And visual shows your preset levels. Level one is vertical and I would include the guidelines there so that you can see them coming and I would not include the fingering so you just have color coding. These are the default settings and you're ready to play. The kids always want to pick a world. We've got a, a future city world, we've got an underwater world, we've got a space world and they have different game objects. I always recommend when you're starting to use the shorter game objects. You don't have to hold it down for the prescribed length. That's a more advanced function that we call the legato challenge. And you might check the audio. The audio is showing the lead volume is all the way up and the accompanying volume is way down. Uh, maybe I want my accompaniment to, to be heard, so I'll move that up. I have the option of an audible metronome. I have the sound effects, which is the applause. Sometimes that applause is deafening and we like that. Sometimes it's too loud and we don't. And so you can test those things here. When I play, I've got a color-coded keyboard up here. I've got a color-coded keyboard down here. And all I have to do is match when this little turtle gets to this keys, I hit the same black key here. I hit P to pause, and I'll hit P to unpause, but I can scroll and see the whole game. I can see which colors you know, I'm going to have to deal with. And when he gets to that little line in the middle is the perfect time to hit it. But I actually have, from the time it touches those keyboards to the time it leaves, to get it. What we found is little kids are usually the best at the game initially. Athletes are actually quite good because of hand-eye coordination and reflexes. Musicians tend to overthink it. People who've had some piano lessons, they're, they're, they're concerned they're going to get something wrong and they're thinking, what key is this in? Is that the dotted eighth note? What? They overthink it. Once they get past the overthinking stage and just get into the game, then because of their familiarity with music and the keyboard, they, they race past the other.